So piggybacking on the women's health a little bit, what are your thoughts on fasting and ketosis for females? Well, you know, again, a real tough question because I find all questions of nutrition to be so individual that it's hard to answer them sort of, um, in a one size fits all sort of one stop shop, um, approach that said, I think there are a couple of things women need to be thoughtful about. If any woman is having an issue with fertility, I really would not add, you know, I, I just, I, I couldn't make a case. I, I can't make a very compelling case for nutritional ketosis if a woman is trying to get pregnant. And I, I'm sure this is just going to piss off a lot of the keto herd. But because, uh, of course, if you're in the keto cult, you believe that ketosis is the optimal state for everything, including, you know, global warming. Um, but the reality is, if you look at the FGF levels um, and, and also if you just think about it from an ancestral standpoint, the higher the level of ketone during our evolution, the more likely we were separated from food. Mm. And the more likely you're separated from food, the less uh, genetic pressure you should have to be reproducing at that point in time. And this, this concept is so well preserved in biology. I mean, we had a great discussion with uh, David Sinclair recently to talk about this. And it's even true in the case of the sirtuins, which would be a, you know, one of the more important regulators of, of, of sort of our aging and our, and including, you know, our reproductive stress. So, um, I think when you look at the FGF 21 data and the ketosis data, there's a very, and I, I don't want to bastardize this cause I wish I'd known that I was going to be asked this question. I would have looked up the paper. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's from a researcher in Texas. I think he's at, um, he's at, he might be at UT Southwestern. Um, but he's, he's, if you search, you know, and his name's first name is David. I'm blanking on his last name. It begins with an M though. But it's if like you mangle Mangelsdorf. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's him. Um, I saw him present at a meeting once and it was remarkable data that looked at the differences in a male and female brain in the presence of changing FGF 21 levels. And it was so cool to see this difference. Mm. Um, the pituitary gland is one of the very few pieces of tissue in the body that has what's called portal circulation, the liver being the other one. So the pituitary has a direct connection via the pituitary stalk to the hypothalamus. The long and short of it is in a calorie restricted state, when ketones are elevated, it suppresses FSH and LH in women, but not in men. This is super interesting to me. And it has an, it has a profound evolutionary. I mean, again, maybe I'm just making up a story to fit this, but I mean, it's, if we're going to subscribe to any of Occam's razor, this would be a great application in a period of famine. You would want women to stop reproducing. You would want to shut off FSH and LH. You would want men to have no impairment on their testosterone level. That's, that's all the more time that they should be out there and able to, to get food. So, um, again, I've, I've always been kind of a little bit careful of suggesting that a, that a woman who's trying to get pregnant, uh, you know, be in ketosis. Now, look, I'm, I know what's going to happen. Everyone's going to say, well, I, you know, I got pregnant when I was in ketosis. Yeah, obviously it's possible. I mean, I'm not suggesting it's not, but if we're talking about optimization, the second thing of course is should a woman be in ketosis during pregnancy? And the, and the answer is I, I simply don't know the answer. Um, clearly we evolved with mothers being in ketosis and having children. I mean, it'd be impossible for our species to be here if, if mothers were not in ketosis during pregnancy. I mean, you know, we didn't have buffets. Um, but that said, is it optimal? You know, again, just because something happened in, in sort of our evolutionary time history, does that mean it's optimal? No, almost not at all. Um, so as a general rule, you know, and again, I don't like to make general rules when it comes to nutrition. Um, I'm not convinced it's necessarily the best strategy, just like I don't think it's the best strategy for kids unless they have seizures or something else, for example. Mm. Um, so, you know, a far better strategy is just like, don't eat junk food, you know, don't eat, don't eat sugar, don't eat highly refined carbohydrates. Um, but you know, should one restrict carbohydrates to the point where they're in ketosis as a very deliberate act? I, I'm not convinced that's the case. Mm. And, and of course, when you start to look at things like, um, maternal diabetes or gestational diabetes rather, um, that's where it gets a little tougher because you know, ketosis can be a very effective tool for treating type two diabetes and gestational diabetes is not type two diabetes, but it has some of its features. Um, 
so again, I, I really, I hope there are some obstetricians out there who spend a lot of time on this problem because it is a huge problem. There are many women who go through this. Um, my sister, I probably have talked about this in the past and I don't think she'd mind me talking about it. Um, and if she does, I'm in trouble. But, um, you know, my sister had an operation when she was quite young that took out two thirds of her pancreas. So during her first pregnancy, she got gestational diabetes which was to be expected because she had like a third of the insulin producing capacity. And then it happened again during the second pregnancy. And then after that second pregnancy, she actually got type two diabetes. Um, over the course of a year, going on a ketogenic diet, actually working with a company called Virta Health that I'm an advisor to an investor in, um, although that is unrelated to the fact that my sister was in, you know, getting care from them. Um, you know, she lost 50 pounds you know, her hemoglobin A1C went from somewhere in the 12s to in the fives in the course of a year. And um, then she got pregnant again. Well, she decided to go off the ketogenic diet, but still be much more diligent and strict. And despite that, she still, you know, requires insulin during this third pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect she'll have a much easier time recovering following this pregnancy. But um, one of the things that's been frustrating, which maybe goes back to this, the question prior to this is her obstetricians, like they have no insight, like they have not a thing to offer her as far as how she should be thinking about managing her blood sugars other than just trying to cram more insulin into her mm. exogenous insulin. So, yeah. And this is why context matters and there's no bumper sticker that yep. you could have, you know, the question thoughts on fasting and ketosis for females. You could have somebody with a constellation of abnormalities that is metabolic syndrome, insulin resistant, type two diabetic, and maybe for that person, their fertility might be an issue and going and going on a ketogenic diet may get them in a healthier state. Yeah, exactly. It might actually improve their fertility yeah. because of the inflammation and all the other stuff that could be happening as a result of what you just mentioned. So yeah, yeah I, I, yeah, well said. <laughs>